All right, everybody, this is part number three. Trees, yes, for Electra. Um, this is the final part, so there will not be no more. Whew, I know, it's a lot to take in, but hopefully y'all have been enjoying the series with Electra. Um, like I said, this is the final part of it. So please comment, let me know, and let's get to the show. Peace. <laughs> So now that we were creeping up on horsepower, the clutch started to do some madness on me. Um, anybody that has done high horsepower on these cards and has not changed the clutch, y'all have sure have experienced the pedal sticking. Um, it was definitely an opener for me and it did it while I was on the track trying to do a run on this car. Um, halfway through the track, the thing just stuck to the floor and um, yeah, that day I did like a 13 at 122 through the traps with a clutch that was sticking. So I never got a good number on this car. I don't know what it runs, um, to be honest. I know you're all like, oh, it's a 13, blah, blah, blah. you should be 10s. Well, you know, it might be 10s. I just haven't had the opportunity to do whatever. And, you know, pandemic world has changed life around here. So it's kind of hard to do what you got to do. But I think we'll get it to the track here eventually. I got plenty of friends that have tires, so... I can always um, borrow those for a run or two. But um, back to the clutch story. Um, I went with the twin reservoir, if you could see right there. That is the uh, Shelby twin reservoir with the braided clutch line right there. To see if I can help prevent some of the sticking with it. Um, it did help, but it did not cure at all. Um, so the next step. In this little bit of madness was clutch replacement that came a few years later I rode with the uh, factory clutch for a while and you know I didn't dog it every time I drove it so for the most part it did what it needed to do but I, I do think you should do the twin reservoir so that way you have your brakes on one your clutch on the other so you can kind of feel out what your car is doing um, and that way if you lose your clutch you don't lose your brakes and vice versa you know so it kind of has that peace of mind part there too but um going on with the supercharger some all more. right if certain people watch this i'll probably get a bit of hate but uh i started pulling down the car um revising the tune a little bit doing some boosting and, and you know for the most part i started pulling down um so pretty much for every size down is a pound of boost uh, so I started off with the sev uh, three seven, and now I'm down to uh, one uh, three point one. Um, I usually run a three two on here, but like I said, I don't drive it that often, so you know it does good. And like I said, it, it does scream. So I'm right around seven hundred and fifty horsepower with this pulley on here. Um, I usually run it around seven hundred. So and like I said, I don't dog it all the time, but you know, if the power is there, we'll use it, right? So I digress with this, and now we're gonna get into the clutch. Like I said, I'm jumping around a little bit because I don't wanna make this video 8,000 hours. So let me go ahead and get to the clutches. All right, if you followed me on this channel for a while, you know, a little while ago, I decided to put a McLeod clutch on here, RST. Well, what I, I guess it was main, partially my fault for buying that particular clutch because they rate it as crank horsepower. I thought it was wheel horsepower. So I was like, yeah, it could hold up to 800, you know, blah, blah, blah. Cool, I'm not gonna crest 800, not with the setup I got going on now. So, you know, I would do that. There it is. Um, it's burnt up. I'm gonna get it rebuilt, but the whole time I had it, um, after the break-in, it would just slip when I would get into it. I couldn't even do a decent burnout because it would sit there and just smoke the clutch up. So, um, called my buddies down at, uh, Mantic. Now we have a Mantic in the car. I'm still doing the break-in period with that. Um, 
So I haven't got the full feel, but from what I can tell, it is a hundred times better just by the feel of it. Because even when I let it go by accident, you know, a little too soon, it'll break your freaking neck and grab so hard. So I'm probably gonna have future problems down the road with axles and this and that and the other. But until those happen, I think this clutch is good. Now, I have to relearn my car because of the clutch itself. Um, the McLeod at the bottom end of the clutch, it would release and then go. This is like mid top. So now I have to relearn how to drive my car. And I don't drive it that often. Um, I've, I've had it for like two months now since I've done the clutch in it. And I think I've put a hundred miles to break in is like three to 500. So I still got a little while. So I kind of try to take it out when I can and do it. I'll probably do it this afternoon, just drive it around and, you know, just to get some time on the clutch itself. It does rattle a little bit. Um, it doesn't rattle as bad as the McLeod, but it does rattle a little bit at the first startup till it gets warm. Um, other than that, it's fine. You can actually slide into this clutch a little easier than you could with the McLeod. It doesn't just grip and go. Um, so that's definitely nice. I now, with the Mantic, you are going to pay that price, but the kit brings everything. It brings a flywheel. It brings the throwout bearing. It brings everything that you need to buy. So, you know, if you buy another clutch kit, you know, you're, you're paying X for this, Y for that. And then by the time you build everything, you're still up to a $2,000 clutch setup if you bought the right pieces. So, you know, it kind of goes with it and you get a cool little suitcase. So, you know, everybody wants a suitcase. But again, like I said, that was that part. And I'm still working that out. Um, we have the assist ring still in it. Um, we took it out with the McLeod. I didn't know that at the time, but, and I didn't like the way that felt. We put it back in when we put the Mantic in there. And so there's a little piece in there is the, um, I don't know, the purge part that the perch, excuse me, the perch. It's a piece that hooks at the top in the middle and there's a little piece of plastic in the middle. Well, my little piece of plastic in the middle broke. So I think with my spring itself, it gets to a point and then just lets go because there's nothing, you know, holding it or giving it resistance there. So I'm looking for one of those. Um, they have them online for 80 bucks or whatever. I'm sure there's somebody out there that has one just thrown in a corner. So I'll probably pick that up at some point. Um, but, you know, that's another thing that goes along with it. And, and people need to understand, I'm not made of money. This is just a hobby. Um, it, I've dumped a lot of money in this car and it's not going anywhere. I've thought about selling it just to make up some of the bills that I owe and whatever. But then I would be sad by another one and then have the whole thing happen all over again. So, Electra's staying with me. Um, my little pony, who knows what the future is with that. Whatever Payne wants to do, she's got the Explorer. So, you know, it is what it is. But, you know, when you get into this part and modifying cars, you have to expect things to go wrong and you can't be upset when it does um it's one of those things that you know yeah i just threw a new clutch in now something else is going to go wrong because of that new clutch because now that's working properly something else another next week is link it's going to do what it's going to do so you know i'm just throwing that out there it's not either here or there with this build but like i said it's one of those things that people need to understand when they start modifying cars that things are going to change and the way that they change it might not be towards you, you know, how you want it to play out. So, oh, there's something I forgot. Well, I was in here earlier. Um, Cervini's hood. It was one of the things that I put on after the fact of the supercharger and everything else. I wanted a little different look. I wanted something that looked almost factory, but wasn't factory. So, like I said, it uses their own style of the factory vents. These are not the factory vents because they're a little shorter and they sit a little higher up on the thing. And then um, you have the open vent. This part I'm not too keen about all the time. I think they should have done a mesh or something there because you can see it's balls to the wall. And the only problem is, I guess if you had a stock motor, it wouldn't matter. But, you know, with the supercharger pulley right there, you have tendencies for stuff to happen so hasn't happened yet knock on some wood but you know 
that's for the most part of that and this was color um, matched by Cervini's so it came painted it came ready to go so all I do is put it on the hood now the thing with the fiberglass hoods if you're running strut the uh, strut tower not the strut tower the um, the hood struts on it you have to use the pop rivet ones for this one um, you can't use the regular ones because there's nothing for it to hook to just for at least for the version that I use I use the um, hold on I'll show you these are the ones that I use are the red line tuning ones um, I have not had a lick of problem with these I have it on this car I have it on that car I have it on pants car I would have them on the truck if I needed them um, I got them on Brandon's car so every car that I own has these um, they're they work great the install on these are fairly simple especially if you have a factory hood because you would just tie it in here and then there's a little hole right in here where this is mounted right now and um, oh yeah, it would help if I held you mounted right here um, and then it would just go there and it's like a two minute install no issues whatsoever and like I said they hold great uh, with this particular one with the fiberglass hoods they're actually heavier so you know you need to have a little bit more shock power so these do the job fairly well so I almost forgot about that sorry about that guys one of my recent uh, purchases was the JLT catch can now I wasn't a believer of the JLT catch can for the longest time um, any catch can not just JLT until I bought it um, it does what it's supposed to do um, and as you can see mine is a little different because of the blower um, this is called the um, it's the hybrid unit it's a uh, one that works for pretty much any car I guess for the Mustangs because it uses a longer pipe and comes down and up and then fits under there versus the factory one not the factory one the, the basic one that they have just comes from here and wraps back here but as you can see there ain't nothing going that way so that's why we use it you'll probably see one of those shortly um, but for the most part like I said I, I got this and um, I wasn't a firm believer on it. I thought it was usually you know it's a gimmick everybody puts it on there da 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 how many people mess with it well I emptied it out one day I don't know where the bottle is here we go and uh yeah it works so there are stuff flying through there and it's supposed to clean it up and do whatever so we'll go with that so like i said i definitely would hit up vinnie down there at um jlt and uh tell him i sent you you know he might be able to cut you out something so there you go all right guys so the last part of the things that I want to discuss is things that you can't really see right now unless I have it on a lift. But I have a one-piece drive shaft by Shaftmasters. That was done around the same time as the supercharger and stuff for obvious reasons. Uh, the two-piece, um, it, it did fine, but I was worried about it breaking and in the middle and all that stuff. So this way it transfers the power a little easier. You don't have to go up and down. It just goes right to it and good to go um and rear end i did have a 355 in this car when it came from the factory i moved it up let me uh say this the right way i had a 355 then i went to a 373 then i was going blower so i went back to a 355 i still thought it was too much for the blower so i went down to a 331 331 seems to be the sweet spot. Um, it, it's a quick enough gear to get off the line, but it's a nice running gear. So when you're doing a long run on the interstate or whatever, you, you're not switching real fast. You're not running out of that top end too fast. So to me, a 331 is r right on the sweet spot. Um, and like I said, I use just the four performance ones on here, so it works great. So I have no problems with that at all. Um, oh, see, I'm forgetting all sorts of stuff today. Hold on. All right. What I was forgetting is my shifter. I do not have a factory shifter in here. I went through two shifters to end up with this one. Now, I had the factory one, and it did okay, but 
the throws were a little long and um uh, the shifter itself is a little sloppy i still have the factory one in pams so i just changed out the ball on it so like i said there's a little comparison difference there but then i went with the bartons um i just went with the top mount bartons i did not go with the trans mount bartons and that one was notchy i mean really notchy and noisy when you would get onto it everything would just vibrate and it was the um one with the uh the plate on the bottom too so you take off the little rubber piece and then put the little steel it was just real noisy piece um so i always heard good things about mgw that one of the best shifters out there so i was like well let me try it i was doing um the uh what do you call it the uh drive shaft at the time so we had to pull that anyway so we went ahead and did the trans mount at that time so with this shifter um it is the md job MG, mgw excuse me i felt like i had a stroke there mgw shifter trans mount um and as you could see those are the shifts and that's how easy it shifts it falls right into place it's like butter um down for reverse easy um there is an adjustment pin for your reverse and your first to second gear they do go through some good directions on how to do it i had to readjust it once i did my clutch because we did pull the trans down and things got a little wonky so i went ahead and um changed that up a little bit so like i said as you can see one finger boom and that is the whole shift not a problem so see, all good so like I said, it's just uh, the MGW to me, and I've had the Bartons, like I said, I've had um, her shifters in other cars, and this seems to be, for the F197, the T82 transmission, it seems to be pretty good. Um, like I said, it, it seems to fit fine. It, it does what it's supposed to, and like I said, it's nice to have just a quick little shift so you can put your wrist in and, you know, you don't have to do a lot of movement to get to where you got to go. So, sucks if you have a cup in your cup holder because, you know, that was a stupid design. But, you know, we do what we can with what we got. So, yeah, MGW Shifter, another good plus for this car. All right, everybody. So, the final thing on this car that I've done as of late is the Underglow Kit by Govi. Um, like I said, it was something I wanted to do, something a little different. Um... It's not a performance thing. It's more of an aesthetic thing. Um, like I said, it's nice when you're out at a meet or whatever. You flick on your lights. You're good. People will notice it. Even if, you know, the car is noticeable. But now it's really noticeable. Um, so, like I said, it was just one of those little, you know, trial and error things. I, people seem to appreciate it and like it a little bit. So, you know, we're keeping it on there and working with it. So, that leaves me to my giveaway. Stay tuned. Hold on. All right, everyone. So, with that being said, I am giving away a set of Govi Underglow Car Light. And this is the new hotness kit. I'm kind of upset about it because this actually has chasing lights where mine doesn't. Mine has the flickering lights, but that also is in this kit. Plus, it has the chasing lights and all that good stuff. So, I am giving this away to one of my subscribers. Um, it comes with a remote. It works with your Apple phone. It works with Android through Wi-Fi and such stuff like that. It comes with all the instructions, to your warranty, and all that good stuff with it from Govi themselves. Um, like I said, this is not a sponsored giveaway. This is not. This is me appreciating y'all for watching my channel. So I don't know exactly how I'm going to do the giveaway quite yet. Um, That'll come out a little more here in the next couple of videos. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do it on maybe a live stream or have, you know, so many subs and then I give it away and use a random uh, comment thing. I don't know quite yet, but that's what's going to happen with this. And um, the box is a little banged up. I don't know why it came that way, but I tested it. It all works fine. It has all the stuff in there, the directions how to install it, all the good stuff. And you can use me as a source of reference if you need to. So, 
with that being said, I'm going to close out this video. I just wanted to show you that I am appreciated by, I appreciate y'all for helping me out with my channel and watching and being there and commenting and doing what you need to do with the group. So this is just a way for me to say thank you. And it is the season to be giving, right? So we'll catch you here in a second to close out this video. All right, everyone. That is the end of the video for today. I know it's kind of lengthy. I know I went over a lot. If there's things that I've missed or things that you want to know, please give me a hit up on the comments, like, subscribe. You know all that good stuff. I want to go ahead and start building this channel up. We're good on subscribers. We're good on watch times now, so let's get it going. So from Electra to me, to My Little Pony, to Stormy, to SUV, all of us here at the Miranda household, Mustang house, AKA, We'll see you on the next video. Peace. Still no hair grease. Later, guys.